You're watching KPRC2, Houston's home for news. As president, we saw George H.W. Bush's life play out while he was in the White House. Now we are getting an inside look at his post-presidential life by someone who knew him very, very well. Joining us now, his former chief of staff, Gene Becker, who wrote the book, The Man I Knew. Great to have you here with us. I'll hold the book up. Oh, love the cover. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Just quickly, I was telling you during break, I think the last time I was here, I was with President Mrs. Bush. Mm -hmm. They were doing a telethon for Hurricane Katrina. Mrs. Bush was working the phones, sitting between ZZ Top and Archbishop Di Fiorenza. I can't get that image out of my head. It was hysterical. <laughs> I wish we had video of that I know. show. I should have warned you. It's got to be somewhere in our archives. Yeah. So as the former president's chief of staff, you you had a ringside seat to his post-presidency life and were able to capture so many different aspects of his life. Tell us about that. And overall, what is the story that you wanted to tell with this new book? You know, in the beginning, Andy, I, I decided to write the book just because President Bush left me so many great stories. I decided, particularly as a former journalist, if I didn't write the book, it would be like leaving great stuff on the cutting room floor. I thought I can't do that. He was funny, he was giving, he had a servant's heart. Um, and then as I was writing the book, just having fun with it, I realized there was something more important at play here. He also left us a blueprint on how to live life. If you wanna be one of those people that when you die, they say, that was a life well lived, you know what? Read the book, he taught us how to do it. How would you describe or characterize your relationship with President Bush? Oh gosh, uh, close. Uh, I, I will tell you, this is such, it's in the book. I can't believe I'm gonna tell you this. I had an unexpected hysterectomy in Portland, Maine, and he came to the hospital the next day, and the doctor comes in to give me the full lab report, and he was a little surprised to find the 41st President of the United States sitting there. And he gently said to President Bush, sir, you need to leave the room. I need to have a private conversation, to which President Bush said, no, no, I'm family. You can tell me everything. And I was like, he sort of was. You cover a lot of ground mm -hmm. with this book. What went into writing it? My editor gave me a great piece of advice. He said, Gene, make this your story. Make this personal about your relationship with him. And it just poured out. It's how I spent the pandemic, Andy. How lucky was I? I love when people say, how did you survive the last year? I wrote a book. It just sort of poured out of my heart. It was the perfect time to do that, mm -hmm. right? It was. So you just shared a personal story, but you <laughs> highlight so many different stories from President Bush's presidential friendships to jumping out of a plane on his 90th birthday to his failed attempts at trying to throw a surprise party <laughs> for Mrs. Bush. Which story struck you the most? Probably one of my favorite chapters is The Odd Couple, which is about his friendship with Bill Clinton. And again, because it's a great blueprint of how to live life, in this case by example, this is the man who devastated him in 1992. It was an ugly campaign, and they became best friends. And The Odd Couple chapter is full of stories that are gonna make you laugh about them going to Pope John Paul II's funeral together. It'll make you cry too. He also had a great friendship with Barack Obama, who came to see him here in Houston about three days before he died. You also wrote about the president's last words to his family. Tell us about that and what that was like for you to share that story with the world. The last words he spoke were to his oldest son. We knew he was gonna die that day. Neil was here, of course and with him, but he called the rest of his kids that day. They all had thought about coming in, but it was so day to day, and we sort of discouraged them from coming. So he called them all that last day, and his last words were to George W., and he said, I love you, son. It's very touching. Extremely touching, and before we let you go, what's the big takeaway? What do you want readers to come away with? that he was bigger than life, 
that he had the world's best sense of humor, but he also had a servant's heart. And he encouraged all Americans to have a servant's heart, to give back to their community. It's one of the reasons why the Bushes loved Houston. Houston has a big heart. And the Bushes knew that, and they loved this city for it. And he and Mrs. Bush will always and forever be Houston <laughs> treasures. Jean, thank you so much for being here today. And thank you for sharing these stories with all of us. Thank you. And I'm going to give you my book. I can't wait to read it. I'm going to leave it with you, Andy. Thank you for having me. Thanks again.